If you want to improve your health, make more money, call in an aligned career, find love, or just improve the relationships that you already have, you're going to want to watch this and it's going to change your life. What I'm going to share with you today is at the root of every single problem that you have, it's the solution to all of your goals. And there aren't very many people out there talking about this. So chances are that I'm going to blow your fucking mind. I heard a while ago that the science of manifestation relies on a healthy, robust nervous system. And as a big manifestation girly myself, I had to find out why and how. So I started poking around and what I found is that not only is your nervous system a fundamental piece of the manifestation pie, but that it's also the foundation of basically everything in your life. Your physical, mental, and emotional health, your relationships, finances, and career, literally everything. A couple months ago, I posted this video about how love and money are connected and how your attachment style plays into your relationships, your finances, and everything else. And at the time, that was a major download for me. But what I've learned since then is that your nervous system is basically the embodiment of your attachment style. The current state of your nervous system is likely a reflection of the current state of everything in your life. This video is huge news for all of us. But before we jump in, allow me to introduce myself. I'm Stacy, and I'm into anything that has the potential to make life better, which I realize is a wide berth. But if you're into going big, leveling up, having the love, money, sex, joy, pleasure, fulfillment that you know is possible in your life, then make sure that you hit the subscribe button. This is a relatively new channel and I have so much good stuff coming in the next few weeks, but oh my God, first, the human nervous system. What I'm about to share with you has totally blown my mind and completely changed my life in so many ways. And if it does the same for you, can you do me a favor and hit the like button? It's an easy thing for you to do and it helps me a ton. So thanks for that. Before we dive right into the deep end together, let's quickly review what even is the human nervous system anyways. As I said, your nervous system is basically the embodiment of your attachment style. It is the felt language that your body speaks, not your rational mind, not your thinking mind. And it's the opposite of cerebral. It's nonverbal, non-logical. And as hard as you might try, you can do certain things to regulate and strengthen it. You cannot control it. You can know everything there is to know about your nervous system and still not be able to outsmart it. This explains why logically you can understand that you're safe or okay in a triggering situation, but still not feel safe or okay in your body. This is the wisdom of your human body because God bless your nervous system, all it's trying to do is keep you safe. Let's go back to the idea that your nervous system is the embodiment of your attachment style for a sec. Your attachment style, if you're new to this, being essentially how you relate to life and the world around you as a result of the way that you were raised. If you were raised in a healthy environment where your mental, physical, and emotional needs were met the majority of the time, you most likely have a pretty secure attachment. And this means that you view the world around you as for the most part, a safe place to be. If your mental, physical, and emotional needs were not consistently met, or you experienced things like trauma, abuse, neglect, manipulation, etc., you most likely have one of the other three attachment styles, anxious, avoidant, or disorganized. And this means that you do not view the world as a truly safe place to be. And depending on your situation, you might actually find the world to be quite an unsafe place. The foundation of your attachment style develops between the ages of seven and 14. Ironically, so does your subconscious mind and the foundation of your nervous system. Ideally, you'll learn what's safe and healthy, but a lot of us miss that boat. And at some point, you're going to swap out what feels safe for what feels familiar. This is because you rely on your family and your caregivers. So even if they don't treat you the greatest, you want them to love you. And therefore, you really have no choice but to go along with whatever's happening in your family, to do what they do, to believe what they believe. And that all becomes your baseline, your attachment style, the foundation of your nervous system, and your subconscious mind. Think of it like the foundation that you build your life on. If you want to learn more about the different attachment styles, go check out this video because today we're talking about your nervous system, which is basically the same, but also different. Your nervous system doesn't speak the language of why and how. It speaks the language of sensation and it develops based on how it felt to be in your childhood experience. Your nervous system as a child is hard wiring into your body. What is the feeling that it means to be alive? <sighs> In every moment, your nervous system is scanning your environment like a bajillion times per second, deciding if a situation is safe, dangerous, or life-threatening. And for each situation, your body has a corresponding response. Obviously, safety is chill. You just carry on. 
singing, playing, laughing. This is the ideal situation if you want to enjoy your life. Dangerous makes you more alert, gets your blood pumping, speeds everything up. Stress hormones are released, adrenaline comes online. You're in a heightened state so that you can be ready for anything. You're no longer singing, dancing, laughing. You're pausing, you're holding your breath, you're hyper aware of what's going on around you. And then life-threatening is full survival mode, life or death. Your body is shot full of all this stuff, running at max speed, max strength, max alertness. People become superhuman in survival states, able to do things they otherwise wouldn't be able to do and able to endure things that they otherwise wouldn't be able to endure. But it's super taxing and really hard on your system to run like that. For short periods, it's okay. But over time, think of it like when smoke starts coming out from under your car's hood. It's sort of like that. It's too late to go to the mechanic. You missed the check engine light and some damage likely has been done. Listen, I never said I was a neuroscientist. I'm just telling you the way that I understand things. So speaking of lights, I've also heard this described as green light, yellow light, red light. So when things are safe, your body gives you the green light. You're still aware of your surroundings, but you can listen to music. You have the windows down, you're singing, you're vibing. You're enjoying the day. When you get the yellow light, you don't move forward. Or if you do, you move forward a lot more cautiously. You turn the music down, you look around, you proceed with caution. And then there are red lights. And when you find yourself in a red light situation, your rational mind goes completely offline and your body's gonna do whatever it feels is necessary to survive. This could be something obvious like staring down the barrel of a gun or something less obvious like living in a mentally, physically, and emotionally abusive environment. Some people say that the latter is actually more taxing because when you stare down the barrel of a gun, you have this massive Massive moment that's scary as hell, but afterwards you have safe people around you to process it. And aside from this one really crazy event, your body at some point will return to its regulated state and your life will carry on. Whereas someone who lives in a chaotic, unpredictable environment never really gets a chance to unpack it or set it down. They don't really get the opportunity to come back into feeling secure, normal, or safe. And they sort of live in this constant state of hyper arousal that's super hard on your nervous system. Anyways, that's just a little riff on the toll of growing up in a dysfunctional family. Our culture is also inherently dysregulating to the human nervous system. Society is set up in such a way that most people have too much on their plates and not enough time to deal with it all, never mind the opportunity to process anything along the way. But here we are. A regulated nervous system is a felt sense of safety, whereas a dysregulated nervous system is one that's full of stress energy. And if you're not sure where I'm going with this, let's do a quick recap. Your nervous system isn't wired for thriving. Your nervous system is wired for surviving. Its only job is to manage threat, stress, danger, and trauma, which are biological events that are felt and then stored in your subconscious and in your body. When your nervous system is under pressure, its job is to release a whole cocktail of hormones that are designed to save you, but in the long run, because your nervous system isn't meant to be under constant pressure, this overload of stress hormones causes all kinds of problems. Over time, a chronically dysregulated nervous system will result in any number of physical or mental health conditions, from mysterious gut and skin issues to chronic headaches, autoimmune disorders, and of course, depression and anxiety, but really, honestly, everything in between, even weight gain, bad posture to hair loss, you name it. Everything you can imagine is controlled by your nervous system. What else happens over time? Because just like the muscles in your body when you work out, when it comes to your nervous system, you strengthen whatever you use the most. So as your nervous system becomes accustomed to these dysregulated states from constant stress and trauma, it will tend to stay in them longer. And then at some point for some people, dysregulation starts to be what's most familiar to your nervous system, to your body, even though it's not actually healthy or safe. So when it comes to your nervous system, you don't keep falling short of your hopes and dreams because you want to. You do it because you hold this pattern in your unconscious, in your nervous system, that whatever you've got going on, that's what's safest for you. You are hardwired to keep your train on those familiar, well-laid tracks, despite how bumpy the ride may be. I actually used to really enjoy the bumpy ride. I thought it made life thrilling, but that's a story for another time. When people say that everything that you want is outside of your comfort zone, this is what they're talking about. Autopilot and repeating patterns is familiar and therefore feels safe. You can predict what's familiar. We are animals, smart ass animals. And if you learn once that fire burns you, you'll stop playing with fire. Just like if you learn that money causes stress and problems or that rich people are assholes. 
You'll find ways to make sure that you never have too much money because your nervous system doesn't feel like it's safe. If growing up your caregivers couldn't handle your big feelings, you'll learn that it's not safe to have feelings. So instead you'll distract yourself to keep you busy and occupied from your internal experience. This can look like anything that numbs feelings, workaholism, alcoholism, shopping, sex, gambling, video games, Netflix, doom scrolling, whatever. The scenarios are endless, but the idea is this. Your body is carrying within it the stored wisdom of every experience you've ever had. It's all stored in a database. And the only goal that your nervous system has is to keep you safe by doing what's familiar. Joy, happiness, pleasure, none of that matters. You can't medicate this. You can't talk your way out of it. You can't understand your way out of it. It is coded into your DNA. At this point, you could even say that it's your vibration or your frequency, but you can't bypass it. You have to process your trauma, feel your shame, your rage, your guilt. You might need to have your heart break into a million little pieces to realize that your caregivers weren't capable of giving you what you needed. You have to own the parts of you that you deem as unacceptable, that you hid away, and this is where inner child parts and shadow work are really great tools. But you have to feel the stress energy, whatever the emotion from the situation was that's holding you back to quite literally get it out of your body. Okay. This video isn't about shadow work or therapy or somatic healing, but I will be sharing some really great resources and tools in future videos because I would never just leave you like this. You want to know how manifestation and your nervous system rely on each other to play nice and make your dreams come true. And I want to tell you, but first there are a couple things that I have to share with you. The first thing being that in order to have a healthy and regulated nervous system, you have to feel safe, mind, body, and soul. Bottom line, I used to think that talk therapy worked because it's therapy, but I'm starting to realize that a big component of why it works, to a certain point anyways, is because a person in therapy is given the opportunity to build a relationship with someone who feels safe, a secure attachment, if you will, someone who encourages them to openly share their experiences, validates their feelings, who will see their mess and not just witness it, but encourage them to keep feeling and sharing person in therapy is given a safe place to feel. Another random thought that I have on safety in your nervous system is an interesting idea about anxiety and depression. Because if you didn't know the reason how I ended up here learning about all of this stuff is because I spent a decade of my life suicidally depressed and then two decades after that doing therapy and shadow work. This is what I think. Because people who struggle with depression and anxiety will often say things like, I just don't feel like myself or I just don't know who I am anymore. And I'm sure there's something to support this theory out there, but I have a hunch that anxiety and depression both result because a person quite literally doesn't feel safe to be themselves. Please let me know what you think in the comments below, especially if you've struggled with anxiety or depression yourself. Does that track? My final random and important point is that you become alike the five people that you spend the most time with because you co-regulate. So be wise when you choose who you share your energy with. Mm. And if you have kids, you should probably know that they actually use your nervous system as theirs exclusively until the age of seven, which I think is bonkers. But when you look at how the subconscious mind, attachment styles, and nervous systems are all formed within the first seven to 14 years of human life, it makes total sense. With kids or anyone for that matter, as long as you're around other people, you're going to co-regulate. You'll either get dragged down to people's lower frequencies or pulled up to other people's higher levels. It's that vibes thing. You can feel the vibes. I'm going to make another video about how to regulate and strengthen your nervous system. So make sure you hit the subscribe button for that because this is just so hard and there's so much that I want to cover, but here is the deal. Your nervous system, your attachment style, your subconscious mind. You can think of them sort of all as like one in the same. Yes, they're all very different parts, but they all work together in the same way to create your life. If you're into manifestation, this is the part where you're going to want to pay attention. But also if you're not into manifestation, you probably should be because it's not a woo-woo concept where you have positive thoughts and then you win the lottery. To manifest simply means to create your life, which is something that we're all already doing using this trifecta of things, your nervous system, your attachment style, and your subconscious mind. Whether you're calling it manifestation or not, whether you're doing it consciously or not, you're already manifesting and you have been your entire life. If you look around, you will see that what you've manifested is all a reflection of your self-worth. You will have a partner, a career, 
finances, friendships, or maybe you're single, jobless, and broke. Everything that's in your life right now is a reflection of what you subconsciously believe you're worthy of based on the programming or imprintation that you received in early childhood. That programming is a reflection of your attachment style. It operates from your subconscious mind and it all lives in your nervous system. So do you think that someone who lives in a chronically dysregulated state filled with stress hormones, who is avoidant or anxiously attached or both avoidant and anxiously attached, has a belief system that's based on high self-worth? The answer is probably no. This person is vibrating at a frequency of a lower self-worth and lower level emotion. Chaos, drama, stress. They're getting a lot of yellow and red lights. Do you think that someone who comes from an environment where they were valued, loved, respected, seen and heard would end up in relationships, careers, or with friendships and finances that make them feel like shit? The answer is probably no. This person is vibrating at a higher frequency based on higher self-worth and a higher level of emotion. They're driving with the windows down, singing in their car, wind in their hair, doing their thing. So you see, manifestation is based on your self-worth, which is a product of your subconscious beliefs, which is based on your attachment style, and your nervous system is the embodiment of all of it. If you feel safe in your body, safe to be who you are, safe to be in the world, safe to use your voice, safe to have boundaries, if you trust that your needs are gonna be met, if you trust that the world is mostly a safe place, if you feel like you are loved by your people unconditionally, no matter what, you're gonna have high self-worth, a secure attachment, and a robust, healthy nervous system to back it all up. But if you don't feel safe in your body, if it doesn't feel safe to be who you are, to express yourself, if you don't trust that your needs will be met, if you don't feel safe to ask for what you want or to say no to someone when they cross your boundaries, if you don't know for sure that you are loved unconditionally by your people, your self-worth, your attachment style, your subconscious beliefs, and your nervous system are all gonna be a reflection of that. But the great news here is that you can learn to hack your manifestation process to change your life by regulating and strengthening your nervous system because it's the foundation that everything is built on. You're likely going to have to make some changes in your life and upgrade the system because you can't really upgrade the same old system in the same old environment that has all the same stressors and triggers. You're probably going to need some respite from some people, places, and things. Maybe permanently, maybe not. Your routines, your habits, the choices that you make, the way that you care for yourself, all going to have to change. But if you heal your nervous system, you heal everything. I feel like everyone knows someone who started meditating or doing ice baths or working out and their life completely changed. It's not because of the act of the habit. It's because those things regulated and strengthened that person's nervous system, right? I'm genuinely curious if you think about what was the best time in your life. Can you consider for a second what was likely the state of your nervous system during that time? How stressful was your life? Who were the people that surrounded you? How were you taking care of yourself? Just curious. Let me know in the comments if there's a correlation between um, potentially the health of your nervous system and the best time of your life. There is so much more that I want to share, but the main thing I wanted to do for you today was have you to understand clearly how your self-worth is connected to your attachment style, is connected to your subconscious beliefs, is connected to your nervous system and how it all plays into your ability to manifest and live the life of your dreams. So yeah, in my next video, I'm going to share some things that you can do practices that you can use to start regulating and strengthening your nervous system. If I was able to blow your mind, please hit the like button. Let me know in the comments below. And I would love to have you subscribe to my channel because I feel like we're friends now and we have so much more left to talk about.